The Flight of the Butterfly. As the legends say, if you want a wish to come true, first, you should capture a butterfly and whisper your wish into its ear. As she cannot make a sound to tell anyone, only the great spirit that sees and hears everything will know. In gratitude for granting this beautiful butterfly its freedom, your wish will be heard in heaven and will be granted. American Indian Legend. I would define butterflies or the butterfly as magic, as part of a magical world. For me, the species I like best is the monarch butterfly. First of all, because it is well documented. Everyone in the world has heard of them because they migrate from Mexico to Canada. Although, ours doesn't have to emigrate, so they don't have the migratory instinct. Yes, I like butterflies. I like working with butterflies. The Flight of the Butterfly Butterflies are marvelous beings, endowed with a fragile and ethereal appearance. Their process of metamorphosis is a wonder to behold, and it regales with a daily spectacle of colors and stimuli. They have been the inspiration for many poems and fairy tales. They are also a part of many cultural expressions worldwide. Although we cannot say exactly, it is said that the first of these insects shared the planet with the dinosaurs. The world of butterflies is a mystery that has managed to capture many amateurs and professionals, motivating them to explore and get to know more about this paradigm of beauty, wisdom, and magic. I studied agronomy, but in pursuit of something more than agriculture. I was seeking to study insects. Ever since I've had use of reason, I've been chasing bugs, like my mom says. I've always had a special fondness for insects. Why I ended up working with butterflies is more for ecology, since I was doing work on bioindicators. I began working with butterflies because my uncle took a trip somewhere in Europe I believe it was Spain, and there he found a butterfly exhibit and all of these specimens. As you know, Europe has very few species of animals in general and butterflies in particular. The specimens that were flying around there were not from that same region, but from many other parts of the world. Many were from Central and South America. Then he got the idea that since Colombia is a country rich in butterflies, why not start a business based on these insects? And then I began to work with him, and that's how I got involved in the story. We have been in the business of producing exotic Colombian butterflies for 14 years. We are located in the municipality of Rio Negro, Antioquia, and at this moment, we're also starting to sell plants related to butterflies that help to attract them to customers' gardens. In recent years, butterfly populations have declined dramatically. Many species are even on the verge of total disappearance. Alteration or destruction of their habitats and pollution are some of the factors that have resulted in butterflies no longer being able to adorn our environment with their beauty and magic. And most importantly, they are not fulfilling their function in the ecosystem. I have been somewhat involved with biodiversity research, doing taxonomy in various provinces, taking samples, because, unfortunately, we do not know what we have yet. So, even within the country, we are still discovering habitats and relationships within the environment to be able to have truer readings of what our environment and its biodiversity really are. On the planet, there exist around 250,000 butterfly species, constituting the second largest order of insects. Colombia is one of the countries with the greatest biodiversity in terms of butterfly species. It has approximately 3,500 diurnal and 45,000 nocturnal species. 
Butterflies, like any living being, are very important to the ecosystem. But in this particular case, there are two functions that they perform that are fundamental to all life on the planet. The first is that they, after bees, are the second most important pollinators. And pollination is one of the most necessary or most important biological processes that there are. Because without pollination, there would be no fruit and many plant species would not exist. So it's a very important function. And beyond that, they're at the bottom of the food chain, meaning that many other organisms feed off of them at some stage of their life. The Flight of the Butterfly They are monospecific, meaning that they only eat a certain plant. So when I see a butterfly, I am not just looking at this insect, I am looking at the plant from which it feeds and some of the traits belonging to that plant. So the population of butterflies allows us to observe changes that would be imperceptible to the human eye. So if a plant becomes extinct or if climate change is affecting a forest and if I know which butterflies live there and if some of them are gone, then I know that a plant is gone as well. Host plants are most always what we would characterize as weeds, though we shouldn't call them that because they are very important plants in the ecosystem. Every butterfly species has a specific plant, so the monarch, for example, is linked to the Curasavica milkweed. But let's say that there is another butterfly that lives on a different plant, like a Passiflora, and so on. For every species of butterfly, there is a host plant, so you can have a thousand beautiful, organically raised plants, very healthy. But if you do not have the specific plant where the butterfly lays its eggs, they will not reproduce. When they reach adulthood, butterflies generally feed on salt and minerals. These salts and minerals are found on everything that is decomposing, decomposed fruit, carrion, even the swamp itself, or on human rocks. That's why we always see them on beaches, in streams, or on wet rocks. Here in the butterfly pavilion, you can see a lot of them on the ground because it's made of stone. When they are in the caterpillar or larval stage, butterflies are herbivorous and they eat a specific plant depending on the species. Some nocturnal moths have no mouth to speak of and thanks to the food reservoir that they inherit from their caterpillar phase, they can survive without having to eat. The transformation of plant energy to animal protein is clearly seen in these insects. I told you that caterpillars have a chewing mouth and that they feed on plants. They are herbivores, so this plant energy that they are eating is being transformed into animal protein. Animal protein that benefits whoever preys on it. So, in the food chain, they are often the first link that is transforming plant energy into animal protein because that one gets eaten by a larger one and so on, until we arrive at the last link in the food chain. So, it is energy being transported from soil to plant, from the plant to these insects, from the insects to their predators. So, this energy that is being taken from the soil is spread throughout the food chain to innumerable animals, because it can go from a very small animal to a very large one. The people of Mexico consumed butterfly larvae that they breed in the maguey plants and are often considered pests. In other tropical countries, it is common for people to eat the chrysalis of some species. It is commonly found in cultures throughout Central and South America, Africa, Asia, and Australia. In other cultures, it is rare or considered a taboo. Butterflies practice a kind of reproduction that we often call explosive, or so it seems from an agricultural point of view. From that point of view, we see that their population growth seems explosive.
a grosso modo. Without beating around the bush too much, since they are the food source for many other animals, they reproduce at an astonishing rate because there have to be a lot of them so that just a few can reach adulthood and can reproduce. It is said that in the wild, eggs have a survival rate of 2 to 5 percent. That is to say that from 100 eggs, only five could become a beautiful butterfly. In nature, there exist many insects that eat eggs. In fact, the greatest enemy in the world of butterflies are microhymenopterids and members of the Diptera family. Microhymenopterids are small wasps that lay eggs inside the butterfly eggs, so they are a food source of many species. The Flight of the Butterfly Butterflies are magical and colorful beings that transmit a different sensation to each person, depending on the nature of the connection established. It can be a sense of peace, tranquility, hope, joy, change, transformation, wisdom, and consolation are some of the emotions that you can experience. For that reason today, we take part in various events, such as weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, and advertising campaigns. To satisfy this demand, this activity aids in preservation efforts to help foment population growth of the butterflies. The breeding process begins with obtaining the parent stock. These are individuals that are going to become the first breeding stock in order to begin production. To capture these parents, we need to request permission from the Regional Autonomous Corporation of the area. In this case, it is Cornare. After we get permission, we will go to the areas we've identified where the species we are interested in live. And then we capture them and we begin to do a follow-up. Obviously, prior to this, we would have already performed a full investigation of each species. We know where they feed, we know their habits, and this helps make production much more efficient. Then, we leave these animals' offspring in captivity in some greenhouses that we will look at later, where they start to lay eggs. There, they feed. They're constantly monitored. And from that point, we begin to extract the material for our production. The material is eggs that are collected every day. Later on, we bring them to a laboratory where they are bred and fed until they become a chrysalis. The butterfly life cycle starts with a female butterfly seeking its host plant to lay eggs. After five to seven days, the larvae hatch. They can be different shapes and colors. The eggshell becomes the first food for the new caterpillar. Afterwards, they feed on the plant on which they were born. The little worm begins to eat and eat. That is the only thing it does during the first 15 to 20 days. In this time span, it can grow to 5,000 times its original size. The larva, or caterpillar, feeds at night and has jaws that allow it to chew. During the day, it stays inactive in discrete locations. Under its head, it has glands that secrete liquid. This, in contact with the air, transforms into silk fibers, allowing it to attach itself to solid surfaces. It sheds its skin four to five times during its growth stage. When it is finished doing all of its growth as a worm, it looks for a safe place to hang from, and there it forms its chrysalis. When it reaches its last stage, it stops eating and prepares to transform into a chrysalis or a pupa. At this stage, it has limited defenses in case of being discovered by a predator. To try to go unnoticed, it tries to blend itself to its surrounding environment. Their colors, which can be brown, green, or gray, allows them to blend into the environment. And from that cocoon, Depending on the species, a fully formed butterfly is born after 10 to 20 days. It returns to look for the plant to lay eggs, and this is how the cycle begins again. When leaving the cocoon, the butterfly's wings are very fragile, wet and wrinkled. After approximately an hour, they have more vigor, 
If the environmental conditions are just right, it will fly away in search of food and a suitable mate. The thing you have to watch out for the most in the laboratory is excess humidity. Humidity makes it likely that the worm will contract some form of disease. Here we have a temperature of around 20, 18, 19 degrees. The butterfly order is subdivided into two main suborders, diurnal or ropalocera and nocturnal or heterocera. There is also a type of butterfly commonly called an owl. This insect, which is among the largest in South America, is known for its crepuscular habits, meaning that it flies from sunset to sunrise. They feed on and breed, taking advantage of mild temperatures during this time of day. What is the difference? Diurnal butterflies have very bright colors, striking in some cases. Most times the coloration is informative. Other times it contains false information. Generally speaking, if they are not poisonous, or if they are not toxic, or if they are not big, they want to seem that way. It is a hostile world. Insects can attest to that. The flight of diurnal butterflies is affected by the sun and the relative humidity. It is for this reason that on hot and dry days, they seek to hide themselves under plant leaves to protect themselves from dehydration. These animals have their own flight schedules. That is to say, they do not remain active all the time. Those that have adapted to the diurnal cycle, they trap the sun's heat with their scales. The sun's heat energy is trapped in the scales and it heats its muscles so that it can fly throughout its daily life. The Flight of the Butterfly Heterocera are the type of butterfly that we call moths, or night moths. It's not the kind of moth that eats away at your clothes. We use the term moth for the butterflies that are active during the night. They have an advantage, so to speak, in terms of evolution. They can live during the night, which for us is very quiet, but for them it is a very active time. By continuously flapping their wings together, they can, over time, produce heat. There are even cases where temperatures for nocturnal butterflies reach the same 37 degrees as our own body temperature. In nature exists the art of deception. Mimicry is a great skill many living beings have where they can imitate others around them to obtain some kind of advantage. The most common type of mimicry is camouflage. It is a biological strategy that allows them to resemble their habitat, either to go unnoticed by predators and thus ensure their survival, or to obtain an advantage in stalking its prey. Many people look for numbers or symbols inside the mimicry of butterflies. People try to find a familiar pattern when they see them, but it's all psychological. Really, looking at how the butterflies mimic or camouflage themselves in nature. We have seen that they are quite vulnerable to the hostile environment we have here, so they look for strategies to survive a little longer, breeding and survival strategies. There are many legends and stories that tell how different cultures around the world have chosen the butterfly to represent their beliefs. So it is something that we as humans focus on certain species, and we create certain stories, certain beliefs with respect to certain types of butterflies. Because I found certain butterflies, like black butterflies, that in one place represent death, but in another place they portend the visit of a loved one. 
entonces mira que la misma mariposa para ti puede representar eh, una cosa totalmente oscura. So looking at the same butterfly, it can represent something completely dark or tragic. But to another group of people, it can represent something very beautiful or good luck. So it depends on how you look at it. For Juan Esteban and Vladimir, the chance to work with butterflies has become a source of constant learning in their lives, spiritual growth, and joy of being able to share with their children and adults the charm and the mysteries surrounding these creatures. What I like most about working with butterflies is that every day you learn new things. Everything is research. There is not much information about butterflies on the internet especially about how to reproduce them, about how to improve the reproductive process. And beyond that, it is a very pleasant environment. As you see, all the time you're in gardens, surrounded by nature, which I like a lot. The transformation process of the butterfly is really magical. The fact that we can see it, we can understand it a little, or try to understand it. The fact that we can learn different things, that it can transform our minds, that we can distill lessons about the nature of life, which we can then teach our children. They teach us about transformation, the process of creation of life, and about how that which is alive changes and dies. So it is really magical. El proceso de creación de la vida y de cómo lo que está vivo también se transforma y se muere. Entonces es realmente magia. The supreme creator of the universe, in his desire to captivate you, placed your hands on a marvelous being, full of life and a thousand colors. This little fantasy creature that today fills you with faith, love, joy, that can make all your dreams come true. It's a beautiful and subtle butterfly. Let it be free and let the Supreme Being grant you the happiness and harmony that it carries in its flight. J.M.W.A.